Just came back from India two weeks ago and uh, seen the revival, seen the changing of the heart of the people. And as I always say, I would rather be in India preaching the gospel. If anything works in India and Nepal, it's the word of God. I mean, I've tried many tools, many other agendas, and many other programs. But when it comes to the word of God, there is no substitute to the word of God. And we just preach the word of God. So this morning, I would thank Pastor Mike, Sister Cleo for all that they have done and you guys have done, have supported us for the last 20 years to preach the gospel in those areas where people have never heard the name of Jesus. But this morning, I have a special, a special message for us who are called the child of God. <laughs> if you have your Bibles with you, would you please take out Genesis chapter 22nd, second, 22nd chapter of the book of Genesis. That's the first book of the Bible. Hallelujah. How would you like to buy a parachute while you are, or, or tie the parachute and you are just about to jump off the plane, you know, the skydive. And the instructor, instructor Instructor says, sir, this parachute has never been tested. We have no idea whether when you pull the rope, it will open or not. So, 
at your risk. How would you like to go on that kind of line? <laughs> a helmet that has never been tested. How would you like to buy it? We have never tested this helmet. The manufacturer never tested it. Whether it can take an eggshell or a stone or we don't know. Would you like to buy it? Nobody wants to buy a product that's never been tested. How do we think that God is going to put us on display without being tested? Let's come to this chapter here. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. Don't fail the test of God. This is what my subject this morning. Don't fail the test of God. Many times we have problems and we think it's because of our sin, because of our iniquity. Maybe, yes. But not necessarily every problem, every task that comes your way is because of what you have done wrong. You remember one time they brought a blind man to Jesus and says, who did sin? Him or his parents? Jesus said, none of them. It's because of the glory of God. So as a child of God, we must understand the trials and problems and temptations and other stuff. They come on our way, but they all have different purposes. And here God is going to test Abraham. As I said, no product is good until it is tested. Don't buy any product that is not tested. And it says after these things, what things? Many people just read from here. But you have to understand after these things. What things? The things from chapter 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. End of 21. After those things. I'm not going to take much time of reading from 12 to 21. You read it. After those things. After God has proved himself that he can be trusted. God said, now it's time. And you know, Abraham is already blessed with everything that a man can think of. He was, I mean, the last thing that he needed was a baby, a son. Not one, two. Ishmael and Isaac. He had every blessing that one could think for or think of or would like to have. He had everything. After these things, God said, Abraham, it's time to be tested. And this morning, can I help you understand that maybe God has blessed you throughout these years. But who knows, God is ready to test you now. You would think, well, why didn't he test me earlier? Why didn't he? No, 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 no. Until you have the full course studied all year round, you don't get the final exam. As soon as you take the, uh, 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 the, the ad admission in some institution, they don't give you the final exam right there. No. They wait until the end of the year, end of the session. So God waited. God said, I want to prove myself first that I can be trusted. And whatever God said, he did it exactly. Something that was beyond their comprehension, even beyond their limit, God did it. God said, all right, I have proved myself. You have tested me and I have done everything according to my word according to my covenant, according to my promises. Now it's time for you to give the test. And this morning, can I help you? If you are going through some trials or some tribulation or some opposition or something, who knows, God is testing you. Be patient, be patient and know that he is God. God is going to take you to another level, but before he takes you, everybody wants to go in another grade. The second grader wants to go to the third grade. And the third grade one wants to go to fourth grade. And the ninth grader wants to go to tenth grade. Right? But without the test, you are not going nowhere. And remember, harder the test, better the product. <laughs> Do you know how they become doctor? Oh, because they study medical. No. I can give you all the medical books and you can study them. Not necessarily you pass them. <laughs> Is only those who pass the test become the doctor. Do you know how they become engineer? Oh, because they have studied engineering. Oh, there are thousands of them, they are studying engineering. But only those who pass the test become engineer. <laughs> huh. 
How do we think that God is going to put us on display? How God is going to trust with other stuff without testing us? So don't fail the test of God. Now let's go on about testing. Hmm. Now it came to pass after these things. God has blessed you all these years. You have achieved everything. You have had everything and said, oh, God is pleased with me. God, oh, yeah, God must be pleased with you. But who knows? God is ready to put you through a test. Test number one. The step for the test is number one is, and God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. That's the rule of the test, the first one. Do you know what, what he was doing? He was doing a roll call. Because you may be a genius. You may have read all the books. You may have received all the knowledge and instruction. But on the day of the test, if you are not present, all your geniosity goes down the drain. <laughs> you can keep shouting and howling and all of that. I, oh, I knew all of that. I knew the, the first, first uh, uh, question. I knew the second question. You may be, but were you there in the testing hall? No, I was absent. You know, I don't care about seven-day uh, Adventists, but I do care about seven-day absentists. Folks, the first step of taking a test, be there. Be available. And that's what God said. The testing started by saying, Abraham, Abraham is on a picnic. Abraham is on a hunting expedition. Abraham, why these chairs are empty? Because somebody is not present in the presence of the Lord. Your first step of testing starts from you being there. When the first question in the Garden of Eden was, Adam, Adam, where are thou? Every evening God would come and take a roll call. Are you in my presence? Are you there or not? And this morning, can I challenge you? When God calls you, where are you? What is your venue? What is your area of being. Sir, without being there, you cannot pass the test. That's the first step of the test. I remember last year, my neighbor, the lady died, the mother, and uh, at night, and her daughter was taking an examination, final examination, and she, was, she had a very crucial subject to take, take a test in the morning, and at night, two o'clock at night, the mother dies. I mean, there is a chaos in the family. Everybody's crying and bawling and all of that heart attack. In the morning, they sent a notice to uh, the school that she cannot come because her mother died. The principal came and said, daughter, listen, if you can just come and be present in the testing hall, I think we can give you some grace mark from your previous test and make you pass but you have to come to the testing hall. Be present, because once I put A, absent, I'm sorry, I cannot do anything. And I mean, she was crying, and she was, you know, she was all upset, I can, you know, you can imagine, her mother dies. But they took her somehow in the testing hall, called the roll call, put the P there, she is present, and she passed the test. Can I encourage you, when God calls you, make sure that you say, Present, sir, here I am. Hello, I am, I am. You know, we decide whether we are going to church or not. It is not up to you, folks. It's a testing time. Be there. And that's what God said. Abraham, and he said, here I am. You passed the first step of the test. Your availability. We are completely unavailable for the test. <clears throat> Let me tell you a few things about the test. Number one, harder the test, better the product. <laughs> like a helmet. Okay, they, you know how they test it. They drop weight on the helmet. And then they start increasing the weight 
like 200 pounds and 300 pounds, 500 pounds. And so they need to see how much weight it can withstand. Buy the one that can withstand the most. <laughs> If you have 200 pounds or you have 1,000 pounds, go for the 1,000 one. That can take the impact of 1,000 pounds. As I said, harder the test, better the product. Why these brand names? Why these brands? Because they spend millions of dollars on their testing, on their research and development. That's what testing is. They keep testing on that. Thousand times more than that, and then they keep keep increasing their testing on that. And harder the test, and we say, no, 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 no. Don't give me that hard. Don't give me that. God wants to give you the final product. He wants to make you the best. Because he wants to take you to a place where I had never seen that. It's a place where God lives, folks. Just imagine if we have to give harder test here in this world to achieve something bigger. How much harder test God wants to give it to us that we can go to heaven. So he makes himself available. Here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. The second rule of the test is that the examiner or the one who takes the test or who is the in charge, he decides the place and the timing, not you. Yeah. The teacher says tomorrow will be that test. You say, sir, can I have the test in my living room? No. I decide the venue. You need to be here in the classroom. Many times we try to do our way. God is testing you. Folks, we are in a test. And only the examiner has the power, has the authority to give us the venue and the timing. God waited 40 years in the wilderness, Moses. 40 years, 40 long years. It was God's timing. The place was God's place. The desert of Midian. Wow, yeah, because it's my test. I'm in charge here, not you. If you start protesting, you'll be thrown out of the test. And at the end, you are called fail. <laughs> Don't fail the test of God. Keep calm and know that he is God the Almighty. We started complaining and whining when the test is on. Shut up. <laughs> Keep quiet. Right? It's a testing time. Nobody speaks. You focus on what the task is given to you. God says, and you know, interestingly, many times you don't know what the question is going to be. <laughs> And suddenly God throws this. Your son, only son whom you love. God made it so specified. Because if God would say, take your son and, you know, sacrifice him as a burnt offering, he would have definitely taken Ishmael with him. <laughs> but God said, no, 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 no. I want to specify. I want to be clear what I'm going to give you the test. He said, Isaac, you love your only son, all of that. And I don't know whether you have heard it or not, from, but my, from my childhood, I've heard preachers preaching, oh, it was so hard. He loved him. It was so hard. So, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right. Let me, let me show you something here. If I ask somebody here, uh, $150, uh, can somebody give it to me? Maybe, maybe not. But look at, here's the magic. I'm going to ask Brother Corey. Brother Corey, can you give me $150? Here I am. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> look at this. $150 immediately. Let's ask him, oh, you know, he loved you, so he gave you. No, 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 no. Let's ask him, why did he give it to me? Why did you give it to me, sir? Because you gave it to me. Hey, here you go. <laughs> Is that a rocket science in there? When I came here, I gave it to him. I said, keep it. And when I'll ask it, give it to me. Why would Abraham be so worried about it? He had nothing to begin with. Isaac was given by God the Almighty. 
Now God says, give it back to me. What's the problem of Abraham? This life is given by God. What's your problem? How dare you keep this $150, Brother Corey? I gave it to you. I trust. I gave it to you because I trusted you that at the time when I'll ask you, you will give back to me. There you go. Hallelujah. Can God trust you in this test that when he will ask you, you say, here I am, Lord. Here it is. And the very next verse Second word says, God says, take up your son, burnt offering, sacrifice. Second verse, it, it does, didn't, doesn't take much because, you know, after second verse, it's the third verse, right? There is no two and a half verse, all right? So, so it is it's the third verse. And it says, Abraham arose early. When it's testing day, you better arise early, brother. <laughs> Well, if, if, if God says seven o'clock in the morning or the test is seven o'clock in the morning, you don't get up 7.15. <laughs> you will miss the train because God is in control. We think that somehow, you, I don't know how, how strict they are here, but in India, folks, if you are even a minute late, a minute, a minute, if the exam starts at seven, you be there 6.59 or forget about even at 7, they close the door. Folks, God is a God of timing. You better work with, the, with God's timing. If he's calling you, don't hesitate. Don't retaliate. Don't get frustrated. Here I am. He rose early in the morning. Don't fail the test of God. He goes prepared. You read the whole story, I'm going to read it. He goes prepared with the wood, with the fire, everything, and taking Isaac with him. Not one hesitation. Because after these things, <laughs> God tested Abraham. Our problem is that we have completely forgotten these things. Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his blessing. Do you know what made Abraham to get up early in the morning, excited, making all the arrangements, not with half-hearted, not with depression. Oh, I'm going to give my... And you know, it was a burnt offering, not just, you know. I mean, in his mind, he was going to put fire on that child. That was, the test was. Because Abraham never forgot the benefits from chapter 12, from the time God called him out of his land, of his dad's land. Till, till here, till 21st chapter, end of 21st chapter, God has been faithful. After these things, God has already proven, don't fail the test of God. He gets up in the morning and takes everything. He goes to the mountain. And even in that place, he is not forgetting to build an altar for God. <laughs> this morning, can I challenge you? Make sure that your sacrifices are put on the altar of God. You know what altar is? Altar is a place that is completely segregated, is completely dedicated for only one purpose, and that's for sacrifice. You don't cook food on altar. You don't do anything. You don't let anybody mess with your altar. It's the altar that pleases God. When you sacrifice on the altar, make sure that in your life you have a time completely segregated, completely separated for God Almighty. Nobody takes that place. Your income, you have something that is completely separated for God's work. Nobody touches that. 
when Noah came out of the ark. Of all the things that he could have built, nothing was out there. It was a chaos out there. It was stinking out there. Everything was upside down. He has just come out of severe, severe flood. He should be cleaning up and he should be doing it. He said, no, 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 no. I'm going to, do, going to do nothing. You read that. And the first thing he did, he built an altar for God. And then he put the sacrifice on that altar. Oh, well, where am I going to bring this, this and that? We have excuses. Noah did not have no excuse. Oh, where am I going to bring the rocks and where am I going to bring, bring this and bring that? No, 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 no. God is not interested in the material. God is interested in your attitude. God is interested in your intention that is separated for God and God alone. Our, our altars are broken. People come, situations come, circumstances come, and they all treading upon our altars. From morning till evening, our, sometimes our altars are nowhere to be found. Make it empty, keep it separate. You see this right here? They could have put some more chairs in here to fit some more people, but this is empty. This is kept empty for a purpose so people can come here and glorify God. Thank you, Jesus. He builds an altar and he ties up his son Isaac. For a long time I thought that, do you think that the sacrifice was completed? Because as soon as he picked up the knife, there was a voice, don't touch the boy. There's a lamb, there's a, there's a ram there. And for a long time I kept, kept asking, I said, God, where is this sacrifice is fulfilled? God said, no, it was not about the sacrifice. It's about my test. And only the examiner knows what the answer is. He is the one who will decide whether it is right or it's wrong. Because he is the one who's giving you the test. It is up to him. Of course, you can give all that you know. But he decides whether it is this way or that way. So now God decided right here. And I'll give you the verse for that. I mean, up till now, everything was okay. But when he picked up the knife, and he was about to sacrifice that child, in my opinion, it would have been more than what Abraham could bear. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 13. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tested beyond what you are able. God is faithful. At the end, he was about to sacrifice, literally sacrifice his son. God said, nope, you, are, you have passed the test. That's what the answer I needed, and I got my answer. I am not going to let you be tested beyond your ability, beyond your strength, beyond your might, beyond what you are not able. I'm not going to give you the test. Instead, there was a ram. The sacrifice was completed in the eyes of God. And can I encourage you? that we tried ourselves to get salvation. That's what all the other gods, all the other religion have kept doing, and they're still doing, try to have salvation by themselves. But folks, we have no strength. We are not, we are sinners. And God said, hold on, Abraham. Take your son Isaac, let him have the life, and I will give you something that can be sacrificed to please God. And that was the Lamb of God. Jesus came into this world. It, it, we should have been gone on the cross for our sins. But he took our sins and went upon the cross. The sacrifice was completed. The sacrifice of the Lamb was completed. God was pleased with the sacrifice. And who gets the life? You and I get the life. We pass the test. We get the word. We get the certificate. We get the, not life, but life eternal. 
Don't fail the test of God. Be there when it's a roll call. Be prepared for the place where he's going to show you. Be prepared for the timing that he's going to show you. Don't retaliate. Don't be a stiff neck. Don't resist. Because you had nothing, we had nothing to begin with. He gave everything to us. And it is now going back to him. Why am I going to? You know, as I said, we decide whether we are going to church this morning or not. Who are we? We decide whether we are going to take this test or not. Don't take it. You fail the test. You want to be stubborn? Fine. You want to have your own way? Go ahead, do it. But don't expect that when the result comes out, your name will be there as past. God is testing us. And many times I just stand, I said, God, if it's a test, help me that I will succeed in this test. Because God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of exit, of escape. And God made a way for Abraham to exit the test. See, when even in our natural world, when a third grader is given the test, he is not given the test of fourth grade or fifth grade. Because the teacher knows that he cannot, she cannot. Because he has not gone on that level. So don't think that God has given you more than you can bear. No, God will never do that. If you be faithful, what he says according to his word, God is faithful. And you know what? Abraham knew it because after these things, Abraham has already tested. God has already proven himself that he can be trusted. And Abraham said, if you, if you gave me one son, you can give me thousands. That's not a problem, God. I trust you, whatever you need. And this morning, can I encourage you? Trust in the Lord always. It will bless you, folks. Whatever he says, he's not going to embarrass you. He's not going to give you something that is your, beyond your strength, beyond your need. He will give you the best if you can just trust on him. And said, God, here I am. Whatever you say, I'm going to do it. When God called me to India the first time, well, I came to the United States to be a citizen, to live here, to work here, you know, enjoy American life, and God asked me to go back. I did not he hesitate, I did not resist, I went back. Didn't know how it's going to be end up, ending up. And 30 years later, I'm so glad that I passed the test, went back to India. When those souls come, the Hindus, and you saw all those people in the, in, in the uh, movie, in the video, they all come, I mean, they are not generational Christians. They all come from the background of worshiping 365 million gods, demon worshipers. But God has changed their lives. Amen. Because of one person, because of a couple, passed the test to go back to India and Nepal and preach the gospel. Thank you, folks, for helping and supporting us so we can go and preach the gospel out there. Maybe after all these things, God is ready to take a test. Without test. No product is a good product. We think, God, would you bless me? Would you do this? Would you? God said, before I do that, can I test you? <laughs> I like to throw a test. And he will never give you a test that you cannot bear. You are not able. He will make a way that you can bear it. I bring greetings from my wife, Ruth, and my son, Jonathan, and all the people that are blessed there in India with your sacrifice, with your love. Pastor Mike, Pastor Cleo, and all, all of you, thank you. Thank you, I'm here to give you the good news. Lot of opposition. This government, Hindu government that is right now there, they have been in four years in, in power. And they are saying that by 2021, they want to take all the Christians and Muslims out of India, make India a Hindu nation. India is a secular nation right now. We can practice, but threat, threatening on our lives Every day you hear some preacher has been beaten up. Some church has been vandalized. I mean, it's going on on a daily basis now. And next year, we are going to have a general election, just like your president election here. And they, they are going to, what they call it, uh, they are going to polarize the, the voting. Like, if they attack Muslims and Christians, then Hindus will get together and vote for this party. Pray for us. I am not afraid. I'm not scared. I know because of, the back, because of the back record, because of the backtrack of God, he has always been faithful. 
Of course, I put it this way, God has never been, has never failed me. He has sure scared me to death a few times, you know, but he has never failed me. All these years, God has been faithful and I'm ready to give anything that I have, the most valuable thing. God, take whatever you need to take because whatever I have right now, it's God's given. Close your eyes for a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know what kind of trouble or problem or, you know, situation you are going through. But can you see from God's perspective that God may be preparing you for something bigger? Because after what God did with Abraham, this test, you read it. I'm in double portion of blessing. God just kept blessing him and blessing him and blessing him. Because he did not fail the test of God. And this morning, can I challenge you that after all these things, you have seen the benefit. You have seen the mercies. You know that he is faithful. You know that he's trustworthy. Don't have no doubt in your mind and said, God, here I am. I want to pass this test patiently, without murmuring, without complaining. I want to be behind our pastor here. I want to be behind the congregation here. I want to serve you, Lord. I want to build an altar. I want to sacrifice everything that I have. Don't think that God is going to rob you with, with whatever you have. He's going to take away everything. No, no. He's going to bless you more and more. And we have already proved him. He has already been proven. He's trustworthy. Hallelujah. If you are going through some trials and you're going through some, some, some kind of uh, obstacles in your life and you don't know what it is, just lift up your hand where you are sitting and let me pray with you. That God will show you that it's a test that you need to pass. Thank you, Jesus. It's not always because of your sin. It's not always because you have done something wrong. It may be God is testing you so God can entrust you more and more and bless you more and more. Lord, I stretch my hand towards all these lovely people here, Lord. And I pray that open their eyes, our eyes, that we can see that you are ready to bless us more and more. And we have to go through this test and we can patiently be there and say, Lord, here I am. Give me whatever you have to give. You decide the venue. You decide the time. You decide what you want, Lord, and I'm, I'm ready to give it to you. I'm not going to make one complaint against that because I know it's a test and I have to be patient and pass the test. Because after this, you are, I, I, I'm just going to enjoy my blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Bless each and every one here. In Jesus' precious name, I ask it. And everybody said, amen, amen. amen. I would like to show you this video. It's a three, four minute video. It shows uh, about our other work other than the Bible college that you saw. Uh, we have a school uh, for the untouchable children. And untouchable thing comes way back from, uh, you know, Old Testament. Uh, everything that Hindu practice, it all comes from way back from the Old Testament. Like they worship cow. Well, you remember uh, the Israelites when they came out, you know, and uh, they threw the gold and they said a calf came out of that. <laughs> they worshipped it. So everything is already there that they practice now. And uh, 365 million gods, as I said, everything is a god. All the creation is a god. They just don't know the creator. And that's why we are there to tell them that who is the creator and they need to uh, worship. So it's quite a challenge. Uh, because uh, they already have so many gods. At one type, they say, why do we need other God, more God? Or they just add Jesus to their list and say, well, we have one more God here, you know. But the challenge comes when they have to take all other gods out and take Jesus as one and only personal Savior. And uh, there are hundreds of people who have been blessed and are receiving Christ. I'm so excited, as I said, I would rather be in India and Nepal preaching the gospel than being anywhere else. But thank God for this church, for your backing up, for your strength. You have, you have helped us so much so we can go and preach the gospel without any hesitation. Thank you so much. Let's go and watch this video. 
we are on the border of India and Nepal, 60 miles from the border. So we have our work. This is the name of our town, Go Rakpur. And my son Tik took this video from a drone. And a million people live in this town. All of them are Hindus, worshipping demons, worshipping false god, idol worshipping. They just don't have no hope. This is where I started my ministry 30 years ago, Ruth and I. People are illiterate, not very much education there, very poor, just earn a dollar a day. Because there is no trash disposal system, trash is everywhere, filth. Our hospitals are taken over by monkeys and cows and dogs. I have pictures on my laptop, if you want to see. Look at the cows all over the town. You cannot kill them, you cannot even, you know, touch them. At one side, they are their gods, the other side, they don't even take care of them. This is our mother church. We started, we built this, and we have a wonderful group of young people, all from Hindu background, Muslim background. They all came to Christ through our ministry there. I preach them through video many times when I'm not there. That's my wife, Ruth. Their conversion is so genuine. Uh, there is no in and out. I don't have to preach a message of backsliding because they don't have no back to slide on. So they just stick on wherever they are. <laughs> yeah, we, they don't make church a convenience store in and out, you know. I mean, uh, they stick, they know what salvation is because they have seen uh, the, the worst. And uh, it's just uh, so wonderful. We, we have feeding program. Uh, our culture is to eat with, with our hands, you know. That's the first uh, spoon and fork uh, God made, so. <laughs> we educate and feed over 300 plus children. This is our school here. And my wife's name is Ruth, but she didn't, didn't get that name up there. A couple from Little Rock, Arkansas, they gave us money to build that assembly hall. And a guy's name, a guy's mother's name was Ruth. So he said, put that name there. So this is the dining or assembly hall that we built in 1994. I've got good help because of the Bible school. These children are untouchable. It means they literally are not touched by the other Hindu uh, high caste uh, people. This is our Nepal church. He's our main uh, connection there. Uh, there is a story about how he came to the Christ. But uh, we have a lot of evangelistic crusade. We don't have necessarily a building. So we just gather in some place where we can have the crowd. In the house, in different homes, open air. different tools of preaching the gospel. We have our Facebook page. You can visit that and you can see our activity and uh, God will bless you. And thank you again, Pastor Mike, Pastor Cleo. Thank you everyone. God bless you all. Thank you so much.
Bless you.